This is a continuation from last week's message dealing with the wild horse and the ass. We found out last week that the that the king from the east, the king from the east, and that's coming from the north, that's going to trouble Daniel. Uh, I mean, that's going to trouble the pope. The king of the north is none other than Jesus Christ Himself. Um, before I get started, before I get started. I'm going to read this out of Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers. Effects of Constantly Following Others. It says, There are men who today might be men of breath of thought, might be wise men, men to be depended upon, who are not such, because they have been educated to follow another man's plan. They have allowed others to tell them precisely what to do. And they have become dwarfed in intellect. Their minds are narrow, and they cannot comprehend the need of the work. They are simply machines to be moved by another man's thought. Now do not think that these men who do follow out your ideas are the only ones that can be trusted. You have something you have sometimes thought that because they do your will to the letter, they were the only ones in whom you could place conf uh, dependence. If anyone exercises his own judgment and differs with you, you have disconnected him from as one that could not be trusted. Take your hands off the work and do not hold it fast in your grasp. You are not the only man whom God will use. Give the Lord room to use the talents He has entrusted to men, in order that cause, in order that the cause may grow. Give the Lord a chance to use men's minds. We are losing much by our narrow ideas and plans. Do not stand in the way of the advancement of the work. But let the Lord work by whom he will. Educate, encourage young men to think and act, to devise and plan, in order that we may have a multitude of counselors. The Bible says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, and thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God, I will also forget thy children. Hosea 4, 6. The Bible says my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge, and we have let men put a stronghold on the work. And, and following their letters to the plan, instead of letting the Holy Spirit lead and guide the mind of the individual, and that the talents be used that God has given us, and let them be developed so that it can profit God and profit the work and the movement. Man has not allowed that. Man has been stepping in the way of that. Daniel, Daniel 8.11 says this. Daniel 8.11, it talks about uh, uh, another power that's doing this, but that's, this is going on in God's church. God's church. Daniel 8, Daniel 8.25 reads as follows. Daniel 8.25 reads as follows. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. This is talking about the Roman Catholic Church. It says, And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. This is talking about the papacy. Okay? and those who follow in the same mode and practices of the papacy. Daniel, Daniel chapter 11 tells us this, and because of lack of knowledge, lack of knowledge, uh, they're going to be rejected, and because they reject this knowledge. Daniel chapter 11, Daniel chapter 11, 1144 tells us this, But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury, to destroy and to utterly to make away many. To make away many, that means to, to make men into the 
the form of a beast or a mere machine not using their intellectual minds and thoughts that God has designed to give them, that God has given them, not allowing them to develop, not trusting and putting themselves in the place of the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 24, Matthew 24 verse 25 says this, Behold, I have told you before, Verse 26 says, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber. Believe it not. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. God says he has already forewarned us. If we go to the screen, I have something on the screen. It's called racial restrictions or racial covenants. It says, Article 14 of the Racial Covenant says, this is taken out of the paper, uh, says, No property in said addition shall at any time be sold, conveyed, rented, or leased in whole or in part to any person or persons not of the white or the Caucasian race. So when it says some things are going to be doing in secret councils or or, or the secret councils don't believe it because all these laws were being made and instituted in in secret councils and these laws are dealing with white supremacy or white privileges which is a big thing that's a big uh, uh, conversation that's going on right now let me finish reading no persons other than one of white or Caucasian race shall be permitted to occupy any property in said addition or portion thereof or building thereon except a domestic servant. A domestic servant is a slave. A domestic is someone who is inferior than the one who has domain or dominion over property or land. Actually, or domestic is, 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 domestic is also a household slave. They called him another name, a house, uh, I will say, domestic servant actually employed by a person of the white or the Caucasian race, where the latter, the Caucasian race, is, and I mean, I mean the slave, the servant, where the latter is an occupant of such property, where the latter, the Caucasian race, I had that right, while the latter, the Caucasian race, were, where the latter is an occupant of the property. So the white people are the only ones who can occupy the property. And so these were laws that were made. They were called racial covenants. Isaiah chapter 28, 18 says, Your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge, that's the seven last plagues, shall pass through, then you shall be trodden down by it. You shall be trodden down by it. We looked at Revelation chapter 6. It talks about a pale horse, which is the fourth seal. The pale horse is the Roman Catholic Church. It's a church that's going to reign. It's going to be taken out without the hand, it's without the hand of man. It's going to be taken out by God. It's going to be trodden down by God. The pale horse, the pale horse, let's read about it in Revelation chapter 6 for a quick turn to Revelation chapter 6 this is dealing with the the fifth seal let's look at a little bit about this pale horse what he was doing the pale horse Revelation 6 chapter uh, chapter 7 says and when he Jesus Christ had opened the fourth seal I heard a voice of the fourth beast saying come and see and I looked and behold a pale horse, and hell followed him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. The fourth part is the four winds of the earth. It says, To kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth, the nations of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar of them that were slain for the word of God, 
and for the testimony which they held. So this fourth power, it says they slayed people. They slayed, persecuted the people who did not worship according to the dictates of, of, what, of what they were teaching and preaching. Now it says, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? That dwell on the earth. It says, And white robes were given unto them, and it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So this fourth beast, this fourth seal, it, this power continues all the way till Christ comes. Let's turn our book to Revelation chapter 20. It says that it's going to be another fulfillment of that time period of prophecy where they were persecuted in 12 for 1260 years by the Roman Catholic Church. Revelation 20 tells us this. It says, verse 4 says, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So that's the second part of it. We're living in the, in, in, in the, the time period of that seventh seal. These, this prophecy is soon to be fulfilled when they instituted a national Sunday law. Revelation chapter 13, it warns us of that. And let's turn there, Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 13 warns us of that. And Revelation 14 also warns us of that. But it says this in verse 11. And I beheld another beast come up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. This is after the 1260 year prophecy. It says, And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. The beast that we just read about in Revelation chapter 6. And caused the earth and them that dwell there to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. This beast with the two horns like a lamb and speaks as a dragon is the United States of America. And he doeth great wonders so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. He gonna be deceiving people through signs and wonders even causing fire to come down from hell, heaven. It says, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do. And Jesus tells us in Matthew 24, this is talking about the false prophet, the Protestant churches of the United States of America. Jesus tells us this. I'm just taking a sidebar to what Jesus said. Jesus says, it says, for then shall be Matthew 24, 21, he says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. It's talking about that pale horse who persecuted God's people. And God's people cried out, How long? They said, until the time of your fellow servants be persecuted the same way you were. Then Jesus says in, Ma in verse 23 of Matthew 24, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. In verse 22 it says, But for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. So God's going to have a people. In the last day they're going to be the elect. These are going to be the ones who are not going to be receiving the mark of the beast. These are the ones who are not going to be seized by this false prophet of Revelation chapter 13. That's going to exercise the same power as the first beast before it, which is dragon power, which is persecution power, which is spiritualism. And then he says back in Matthew 24, 24, he says, For there shall rise false Christs and false prophets. This is the false prophet of Revelation chapter 13, 11. It says, which is going to be doing signs and wonders. The United States of America, Protestants of the United States of America. It says, shall, 
and shall show great signs and wonders in as much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect the very elect mentioned twice it's possible so the United States of America back to Revelation chapter 13 it says what they're gonna do is the false prophet verse 13 says 1313 Revelation 13 13 says and he do a great wonder so that he make it fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beasts, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beasts which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power, the United States of America, the Protestants of America, the Protestant churches of America, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So this time is coming upon us. And he caused a fall both small, great, rich and poor, free and bond, slaves, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Now, we just read about these racial covenants, where they made a covenant with death, where if you're not white, you cannot buy property, or you cannot even live in it. And these laws was instituted after slavery, after 1798, in the 18 and 1900s, and still, unto this time we're living in now, they're still holding them. It says, that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark of the beast or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom that him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for the number of the man and his number is six hundred three score and six 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 six. Back to the screen. It says, and your covenant with death shall be disannulled. So people who are able to make it a covenant with death, that pale horse. So that they can get rich by property. It says, And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then you shall be trodden down by it. Revelation chapter 13 tells us about the, 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 the trotting down of this, the people who make a covenant with death. Buying and selling. That's going to be able to buy and sell. Revelation 13, it talks about the the third angel's message, I'm going to read it from verse 6, the first, second, and third. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. That's the first angel. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying, with a loud voice, If any man, this is 1840, after 1844, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. That's the overflowing scourge. Which is poured out without mixture. That's without mercy. Into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. In the presence of the holy angels. And in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night. Who worship the beast in his image. And whosoever received the mark of his name, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. It didn't say we believe in Jesus. It says the faith of Jesus. That means the same exact faith that came from Jesus and came out of Jesus. It says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. That's keeping the commandments of God. Specifically dealing with that seventh commandment and all the rest of them. 
and the same faith that Jesus Christ taught. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from hence pour forth. 1844. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Everything they do is going to follow them. Their works are going to follow them. Those who wrote these words, the spirit of prophecy that God has given them and committed unto them, that wrote these charts, given us these charts and, and these wonderful messages of salvation, it says their works is going to follow them. Okay? The title of this message is The Angry Horse Causing Death and Destruction in His Path. To the wild ass while Balaam smites him for crushing his foot against the wall, building walls, and a, by trying to avoid the angel's message. The angry horse causing death and destruction in the path to the wild ass while Balaam smites him and crushing his foot against the wall, avoiding the angel's message. And the fate of the angry horse. The fate of the angry horse. We found out the angry horse uh, in past uh, presentations that the angry horse is a narrow-minded governments who pass uh, oppressive laws or suppressive laws, which is the racial covenants which we saw. And they causing the wild ass. Remember the wild ass? They couldn't speak. The wild ass that Balaam was riding. It had. Uh, it, it, it had muzzle on his mouth, but also it saw the angel in the path. And when it saw the angel, it tried to turn out of the way of the angel because Balaam was headed to destruction. He was destructing his own soul, but he was also going to make a covenant with Balak, which means, uh, uh, which means, um, Balak's name means destroyer, destroyer or spoiler, spoiler. So he was going to make a covenant with the spoiler or Balaam, a Balak, or, or the, the destruction, the other angry horse, to curse God's people, to bring a curse upon God's people. And the, the wild ass saw him and tried to turn out the way. He crushed Balaam's foot on the wall. If you haven't read this story, you can read it in Numbers chapter 22. So the ass, he spoke with the man's voice after he was getting beat merciless by Balak, which was the false prophet. Revelation chapter 11, uh, 13, 11, which was the false prophet beating and smiting the ass. Okay, because he was on his way to get some money to curse God's people. And the angel was getting ready to destroy him, smite him. But he didn't. He let him go because he wanted to go. And that's exactly what God is doing now. If you want to go, go. He's letting you go. Following your own way. But we look at the screen, we see that we have a slave. And the slave has an instrument of torture around his mouth and on his head. And this instrument of torture is something that, would, that Rome, had, uh, Rome had invented. And it's called the Iron Gag. We know Rome is the Iron Kingdom. It's called the Iron Gag. And a gag is something that, that shuts your mouth so you cannot speak. But this slave, these, these, this, this wild ass, he could not speak. It was getting tortured and beat. And no one was there to, 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 to defend the wild ass while he was getting beat. So God opened the mouth for that wild ass. And that ass spoke. And what that wild ass said, he said, he asked him, what did I do to you? Let's look at it. Let's read it. Numbers chapter 22. Let's look at it and read it. Numbers chapter 22. Numbers 22. The angry horse causing death. And destruction in his past, Balak, the spoiler. The Bible says, Let no man spoil you by vain philosophy. Numbers chapter 22, Numbers 22, it says, 
starting at verse, starting at verse 29. And Balaam said unto the ass, wait, let me go a little bit, let me go, let me go a little bit further. Let me go to verse 22, 22, 22. And God's anger was kindled because he went, God told him not to go. It says, and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. How he was riding upon the, his ass and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. So he's forcing the ass into the way that he wanted to go. That's a slave master if I've ever seen it. It says, But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyard, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. It says, And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself onto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall and smote her again and he smote her again and the angel of the Lord went forth and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left and when the ass saw the angel of the Lord she fell down under Balaam and Balaam anger was kindled is that an angry horse? And smote the ass with the staff. Staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. And she said unto Balaam, the false prophet, What have I done unto you that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam, he was so angry and furious. He spoke to the ass. This one says, And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill thee. See this false prophet? He's saying, I would, if I had a sword, you're lucky I got this rod in my hand, because if I had a sword, I would kill thee. Now I want you to keep in mind what we just read in Revelation chapter, chapter, uh, chapter 13. It says, Revelation chapter 13, let me read it again about this wild ass in this false prophet, Balaam. It says this, in Revelation chapter 13, it says, it says that, Revelation 13, Revelation 13, verse 13. I'm going to start it from verse 13 again. It says this, Balaam. It says, the false prophet. It says this, verse 13, Revelation 13, 13. It says, He doeth great wonders, so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying unto them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed you see it you see the comparison verse 29 back in numbers 22 29 says and balaam said unto the ass because thou hast mocked me, I would therefore a sword in my hand, for now I will kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, I am not thine ass. He says, I don't belong to you. Upon which thou, he says, let me see, as the ass, and, and the ass said unto him, Am I not thine ass? Am I not thine ass? Thou which thou hast ridden, Ever since I was thine unto this day, was I ever want to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. 
So he's answering. He said, I ain't do you. ain't did nothing to me. That donkey, ass. You ain't did nothing to me. But I still want to kill you because I want this money. He says, Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. So he said he wished he had a sword, but God had a sword in his hand. He didn't see. And after the sword, that's what God going to smite the nation with. The sword, which is the word of his mouth. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. Perverted way. And the ass saw me, and turned me, turned me these, tur and, and turned from me these three times. Just like we have three angels' messages, right? And unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee, and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. For I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displeased thee, I will get me back again. He said, I'll go back. I'll turn back. And the angel of the Lord, this angel of the Lord is none other than Jesus Christ. We studied this earlier. Said unto Balaam, Go with the men. But only the words that I shall speak unto thee, thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak, the princes of the spoiler, the princes of destruction, the ones who's trying to cause destruction upon God's people. They also had muzzles on the woman's face. I got a woman up there, for those who can't see the slide. The woman was also muzzled. They could not speak, the wild ass could not speak. They could not stand up for themselves because if they did, they would get killed or beaten by the false prophet and branded we got a branding iron right there branded also with the mark of the beast it says now the spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times and that's the times of the gentiles some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy having their conscience seared as with an hot iron branded Torture. See the donkey, the donkey crushing his feet in the vineyard. The vineyard is God's church. The angel standing with the sword is trying to turn that false prophet away from going to the path of destruction to try to curse God's people, practice divination and witchcraft upon them. We went over this the east wind, went over this already the east wind, so I'm not going to go over that again, but the east wind. We found that that this is uh, it, it comes from the east. And we found out that 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 Jacob had a ladder, Jacob's ladder, and it came from heaven to the earth. It was symbolic of Jesus Christ Himself and angels descending, ascending and descending upon him. And we found out that that message came from the east, the east, the east wind. I'm not gonna go. I went over that just last week, so I'm not gonna go over all this stuff. You see the angels standing in the way. This is the Chicago Tribune. The Chicago Tribune. We're talking the time, the times of the Gentiles. Times are more than one, but now we're going past. We're going a little bit further. We're going past 1844. We're going towards the Civil War, 1863, and now we're going to look at a newspaper clip, December 31st, in 1914. 1914. We're just going to be looking at some smiting of this beast that's smiting and making these racial covenants. And it's, it's from, from the Chicago Tribune, December 31st, 1914. This is what it says. 1914 lynchings show rise. It says the number of lynchings in 1914 shows a small increase over that of 1913 being 54 and compared to 48 in 1913 and uh, 64 in 1912. 
The following table shows an annual number during the last 30 years may be a general interest. So remember, slavery started, uh, the war ended officially in 1865. And so when the war ended, there was, this is the table. I'm just going to read a couple. I'm not going to read all of them. So from 1865, the year slavery started, there were 184 lynchings. 1886, there were 138 lynchings. I'm going to jump down. 1892, there were 205 lynchings. Who is this angry horse? After 1700, this is after the Civil War. This is after the war. It says, 1892, there was 205 lynchings. I'm going to skip to 1908. 1908, there was 100 lynchings in a year. That's the only ones recorded. And all these lynchings are documented, documented in the paper of the false prophet, the beast with the lamb-like, but speaks as a dragon. And I'm not going to read them all, but it's, 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 deal, it's dealing with the last 30 years. A total, this is a total, the total of 2,675 murders or lynchings within the 30 years without punishment or without any mention of it in your churches or by your churches. 2,000 Six hundred and seventy-five. That's 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 recorded. That's not including the rapes. That ain't including the abuse of children. That's not including all the atrocity, and that's not including all the bullets that they riddled them bodies and, and mutilation of them bodies to torture and torment and terrorize the black community. Not a word mentioned from your pulpits. Wonder why. Who's the writer? This is the question, guys. Who's the writer of the wild ass? We already found out it was Balaam. We already found out it was a false prophet. The next question, are they angry? Who's smiting the ass? This is the false prophet. Who hired? Who's hired to curse God's people? And who hired him? The one who hired him, his name is Balak. Remember I said Balak, his name means spoiler. His name means spoiler. We're going to ask this question right now. Let's turn to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. His name is spoiler. Okay? And this is what Colossians chapter 2, this is how it reads. Colossians chapter 2. The Bible tells us this. This is some counsel that Paul is giving to his church. To God's church. Okay, Colossians chapter 2 reads as follows. It says, Balak, keep in mind Balak, the one who hired the false prophet. Remember the false prophet is the United States of America. The Bible says this, beware lest any man spoil you. Balak's name is a spoiler. Through philosophy in vain deceit, after the traditions of men, and people finna practice the tradition of men tomorrow is Easter. After the rudiments of the world, that's the orders of the world, or the elements of the world, or the ordinances of the world, and not after Christ. That's who's spoiling them. They're spoiling them, they're deceiving them through Greek philosophy. Greek philosophy. And his name also means destroyer. Turn to Revelation chapter 11. Destroyer. Balak's name is destroyer. He's the one who hired the false prophet. Another false prophet we know was Judas. He also got hired. We're going look to look at him in a little bit too. Revelation chapter 9. Revelation 9 11 tells us this. It's something that happened on 9 11, 2001. And, and, and most people saying that, that 
this false prophet, this work of deception that was done in secret chambers, that they trying to pin this upon the donkey, the wild, they say it's a wild ass, but we find out the ass is the one who's getting ridden, the ass is the one who's getting beat, tortured, and murdered, and lynched from 1865, not including the years before that, to 2001. And we're going to look at a little bit of that history that people want to wink at and hide. It says this in Revelation chapter 9, 11, it says this. The sixth angel sounded. No, 11. It says, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon, which means destroyer. The Greek name is destroyer, Apollyon. Apollyon. Um, it says, and who sells out God's people for money? Let's turn to Luke. Turn to Luke. Who sells out God's people for money? Let's turn to Luke, book of Luke, Luke chapter 12. Who sells out God's people for money? Luke 12. 16. Luke 12, 16 reads as follows. It says, And he spake a parable, he is Jesus, unto them, saying, the, the, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits my domestics, my food. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns. Okay? 1865. Plantations. And build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years for your prodigies, your children in the future. White privileges. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich towards God. Turn to Revelation chapter 3. The false prophet. This is another. This is another rich fool. Another rich fool. Another rich fool. Another Balaam. This is dealing with God's last day church. Right before he comes the second time. And it says, And the angel, and, and unto the angel, Revelation 3, verse 14, And to unto the angel of the church of Laodicea, write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, and thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. This is dealing with the time period where all these lynchings was taking place. God says, I know your works. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods. Ain't that what the rich fool said? I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Stop hiding your eyes to all this atrocity that's going on. Every time someone want to talk about it, you want to table it or put a gag law on it. Act like it didn't happen. Turn your eyes from it. This is what they were doing. This is the same thing Balaam was doing until God had to open up his eyes. Verse 18 says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiments, that thou mayest be clothed, that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with the eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I, even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. But most of the people said, we will not hear. That's the rich fool. You see that? That's who's smiting the ass, turning a blind eye to all the atrocities done to his brother. But he's saying that his brother is a, is a domestic animal, a domestic beast, a wild ass. That's how they're looking upon him. They're serving him. The Bible tells us this, remember, remember, a power from beneath, working to bring about the last scenes in the, in the drama, uh, this is evangelism, page 623, remember, a power from beneath, working to bring about the last great scenes in the drama. Satan coming as Christ and working with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in those who are binding themselves together in secret societies. In secret society, another word for that is the common good of white supremacy. You got to have Venice joining that. We're going to see that in a little bit. It says, those who are yielding to passions... For confederation are working out the plans of the enemy, the cause will be followed by the effect. These are Satan's forces, confederation of Satan's forces. In Revelation 17, 13, it says, These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Who tried to deceive Jesus? Who? The question is, who tried to deceive Jesus? And Jesus was the elect. Okay, who tried to deceive the elect or Jesus Christ? Matthew chapter 4, 1 to 11 tells us that it was Jesus, it was Satan. Satan the dragon, he tried to, he tried to tempt Jesus and tried to deceive the elect. So we have Satan, that's the dragon. And then we have another power that tried to deceive Jesus Christ. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew 22. Who else tried to deceive Jesus? Okay, tried to deceive the elect. And this is what we need to know, because most people claim that they the elect, but the elect is those who have the faith of Jesus, what we just found out, we just read not too long ago. Matthew 22, Matthew 22 reads this. This is who tried to deceive the elect. The elect was Jesus Christ, and the elect is those who have the faith of Jesus. Jesus says this, I mean, this is what's happening. It says, but when the Pharisee had heard Matthew 22, 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, lawyer, remember, the angry horse is one who makes us oppressed, have a narrow mind and make it for oppressive laws. It says, then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question tempting him and saying so he's trying to tempt Jesus test Jesus he's trying to deceive Jesus master which is the great commandment in the law Jesus said unto him thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul and with all thy mind a lot of these people, they're not giving their mind to Christ. It says, these all have one mind. That's what Revelation 17, 13 says. And they shall give their power and strength unto the beast. And the beast is the Roman Catholic Church. The dragon is the false prophet that has the same mind. So you got the two powers of deception. You had the dragon trying to deceive the elect. And then you had the false prophet, which is a Pharisee. Which, which, was, which was a rich man, which was a fool, he was also trying to tempt Jesus. And Jesus Christ told him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. He didn't say love your country. He did not say that. He didn't say love your nation with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. He did not say make America great again. Jesus Christ did not say that. He said love the Lord your God with all your heart. 
with all your soul and with all your mind. Revelation 17 says that these have one mind. Their mind was not the mind of Christ. And this is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You may think of him as a beast of burden, but he's your neighbor. You may have made a constitution that promised freedom and liberty to everybody in the pursuit of happiness while you excluded your neighbor because you thought he was a wild ass that you could just beat and turn the blind eye and say, oh, that's in the past. I never did this to you, but you're benefiting off of it and you're not acknowledging yourself you're not acknowledging your sins and how you got rich and you are hoarding the money for the last days to be burned up in the flames of fire on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets this is the roots of the commandments all ten of them loving God with all your heart mind and soul strength and loving your neighbor as yourself Back to the screen. It says, who tried to deceive Jesus? So we know it was a dragon, which is Satan. And we know it was a false prophet, which is the two-horned beast of Revelation chapter 13. It says, there will be a universal bond of union. Evangelism 623. The completion of the last scenes of the great drama. Satan coming as Christ. It says, there will be a universal bond of union, one great harmony, a confederation of Satan's forces. And they shall give their power and strength unto the beast. This thus is manifested. The same arbitrary, that's angry, oppressive power against religious liberty, freedom to worship God according to the dictates of conscience, as was manifested by the papacy when in the past... It persecuted those who dared to refuse to conform to the religious rites. And the religious rites, they're Freemasonry or the mystic arts. And one of them was slavery. The other one was dealing with drugs and souls of men. It says, and ceremonies of Romanism. The ceremonies of Romanism, that's the BEM document, which Seventh-day Adventist Church signed in 1982. That's taken out of Manuscript 24, written in 1891. Okay? We want to turn the blind eye to the BEM document that we signed in 1800s. Just like we want to turn the blind eye to how they was oppressing their brothers. Testimonies to ministers. This is what it says. Remember. Remember the, two, the 2,675 lynchings in the 30 years after slavery ended 1865. Testimonies to Ministers, page 304. This is called The Effects of Constantly Following Others. The Effects of Constantly Following Others. How my heart aches to see presidents of conferences in secret chambers taking the burden of selecting those whom they think they can mold to work with them in the field. They take, they take, they, they, they take, can mold to work with them in the field. And we know the field is the world. It says they take those who will not differ with them, but will act like mere machines. No president has any right to do this. Leave others to plan. And if they fail in something, do not take it as an evidence that they are unfitted to be thinkers. Our most responsible men had to learn by long discipline how to use their judgment. In many things they have shown that their work ought to have been better. The fact that men make mistakes is no reason why we should think them unfit to be caretakers. Those who think that their ways are perfect, even now, make many grave blunders. This was written in August 24th, 1905. She says, even now they are making grave, that's serious blunders. But others are none the wiser for it. They present their success, but their mistakes do not appear. Hmm. 
turning a blind eye. Don't write about that, huh? Then be kind and considerate to every man who constantly enters the field as a work for the master. Our most responsible men have made some unwise plans and have carried them out because they thought their plans were perfect. They should have associated with other men who could view matters from an entirely different point of view. They should have associated with other men who could view matters from an entirely different point of view. And I wonder who these other men was. We're going to find out who they should have been uh, uh, considering. They had a different view of the way they were seeing things. So we got some dates. We got 1861. Ellen White had a vision. She had a vision of the Civil War. And she had a vision. It was called, it was, she was talking about the, 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 um, the fugitive slave law. So she had a vision and saw it, and she saw an angel come down. And the angel waved his hand back so that the war would be prolonged so that the, 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 this nation that was using slavery to benefit off so it could be punished a little bit more. We got 1863, that's when the, uh, that's when the, when the war started. We got eight, six, uh, 1865, that's when it ended, and we got a compromise. It was a, something called the Compromise of 1877. That was dealing with Black Reconstruction. They reneged on that also, and then uh, uh, in that deal, they removed the federal restrictions against the protection of the black man, and it was free reign to kill blacks once more. Thus, back to the screen, thus they would have helped them in their plans. They should have associated with other men who could have viewed matters from an entirely different Viewpoint, thus they would have helped them in their plans. What folly, that's foolishness. It is to trust a great mission in the hands of one man. Who, so that he shall mold and fashion it accordance to his mind. And after his own diseased imagination. Racism. Men who have been narrow. Angry horse. Men who have been narrow and who have served tables, table servers, who are not far seeing, they can't see the future, are disqualified for putting their mold upon the work. Those who desire to control the work think that none can do it perfectly but themselves. And the cause bears the mark of their defects, and their defects was a diseased mind, a diseased mind. Testimonies to the church. This is also a, 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 a follow-up of what she's talking about and who she's talking about. The effects, the effects of constantly finding those testimonies uh, for the church, volume 9, page 187. A life of grace and peace. She has scriptures. The scriptures talking about the, the divine grace, the grace that God has given, and one of the graces was virtue. Virtue. Um, Virtue of excellency. Okay? In the common good, we found out about the common good last week. It says the common good, when they thought about virtue, that virtue did not mean the virtues that the Bible is talking about. The virtues is only dealing with those who are of the white race. But it says these virtues, Second Peter uh, 1, 5-7. These are the steps. The steps to uh, for God's people advance to be excellency. But so it says, these virtues are wonderful treasures. They make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Isaiah 13, 12. 2 Peter 1, 8, and Matthew 28, 18. I'm going to read those real quick. 2 Peter 1, 8. 2 Peter 1, 8. Reads as follows. 2 Peter 1, 8. And Matthew 28, 18. 2 Peter 1 8 reads, Whom having not seen, talking about Jesus Christ, you loved, in whom now, in, in whom through now you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full of glory. 
Matthew 28, 18 reads as follows. Matthew 28, 18 says, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. No, 18 says, And Jesus came and said unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. It says, back to the screen, I was almost afraid to come to this country. And this is the, the country she's talking about is the country of Revelation 13, 11, which is the, that has the lamb-like horns and speaks as a dragon. I was almost afraid to come to this country because I heard so many say that the different nationalities of Europe were peculiar. That's white supremacy. That's the pale horse. And had not and had to be reached in a certain way. But the wisdom of God is promised to those who feel their need and who ask for it. God can bring the people where they will receive the truth. Let the Lord take possessions of the mind and mold it as the clay is molded in the hand of the potter. And these differences will not exist. This racism will not exist. Look to Jesus, brethren. Copy his manner and spirit, and you will have no trouble in reaching these different classes. These different classes is blacks, which they called inferior. We have not six patterns to follow, nor five. We have only one, and that is Christ Jesus. If the Italian brethren, the French brethren, the German brethren try to be like him, they will plant their feet upon the same foundation of truth. And that's the faith of Jesus. The same spirit that dwells in one will dwell in another. Christ in them, the hope of glory. I warn you, brethren and sisters, not to build up a wall of partition. Get your foot crushed in by that wild ass between different nationalities. Do not build up a wall of partition between different nationalities. And that's the common good. That's what the common good was doing. On the contrary, seek to break it down wherever it exists. We should endeavor to bring all into harmony that there is in Jesus laboring for one object, the salvation of our fellow men. And that's what they were and were not doing. Maybe it might have been fear. Stop supporting or suspecting sustaining and upholding a system that historically has disenfranchised with the racial covenants and lynched blacks for the common good. Wake up out of your strong delusion. Wake up out of your strong delusion. The angry horse is not a wild ass. Revelation 6, 8. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat upon him was death and hell and that's the son of perdition. You read about them in Revelation 17, 11, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, Daniel 11, 44, and Daniel 8, 17 to 21. It says, Death and hell followed him, Revelation 6, 8, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger. They ain't going to be a by ourselves. Starve, starve them, starve it, starve the slaves. We don't want to look at this. And with death and with beasts of the earth. Beasts are kingdoms and nations of the earth. Our short, our short-sighted vision beholds the shadows. The angry horse, not the wild ass. Our short-sighted vision beholds the shadow, but cannot see the glory beyond. Angels are hard holding the four winds, which are represented as an angry horse seeking to break loose and rush over the face of the whole earth, bearing death in its path. And so while this angry horse, it says. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 27, 3, it says, In measure when it shooteth forth, thou wilt debate with it. He staff his rough wind in the day of the east wind. This is the condemnation, John 3, 19. This is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Great Controversy, page 263, says the nation, talk about atheistic France, was left to reap the results of the course which she had chosen. The restraint of God's Spirit was removed from the people that had despised the gift of His grace. 
evil was permitted to come to maturity and all the world saw the fruit of willful rejection of light. So we saw that in the reign of terror, okay, in atheistic France. This was the beast that ascended out the bottomless pit, okay? It's also the same time United States, that false prophet was on the scene. And the same, they had the same secret organization. Benjamin Franklin, he was part of this. Secret societies, Freemasons, and, and Illuminati. Albert, also, Albert Pike was involved in it. And these was a power that was working from beneath to bring in the last scenes it, uh, 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 of the drama of the great drama, Satan coming as Christ. Continue from letter 128, dealing with the angry horse in 1897, paragraph 26. It says, the whole heavenly universe is interested. The law of God is exercised in behalf of his fellow commandment-keeping people. It is God in whom we must trust. It is only a narrow-minded government that legislates law legislates the suppression of God's law. God has the world in his hand. We have God on our side. All heaven is waiting and longing for our cooperation. The Lord is supreme. Why should we fear? The Lord is almighty. Why should we tremble? The pa in the past, God has delivered his people and he will be our helper if we will arise in his strength and go forward. If, that's a condition. Okay? If we will arise and go forward, a narrow-minded government is an angry horse that legislates the suppression of God's law. Okay? And that's what they're going to do. They're going to make you receive a mark in your forehead or in your hand, your conscience. That you cannot buy or sell except for you think, have the same mind as the beast. Think in the same way. Condoning the same acts. When Satan, the dragon, walked through the Roman church to lead men away from obedience, his agency was concealed. He hides it was concealed and his work was so disguised that the degradation and misery which resulted were not seen to be the fruit of transgression okay this is great controversy it says the fruit of trans it was concealed and so this is this is dealing with the messianic constitution i'm going to read the first article the messianic constitution and bylaws bylaws which means it overrides your constitution of the messianic society one of this last week, Article 1 says the name and purpose. The purpose, uh, uh, the name is Freemason. I'm not going to read all that. But the purpose, the purpose of the Masons, this Freemason Society and bylaws, the Masonic Society is organized as a center of union. That's a confederation. The four, remember we read earlier, Satan's forces are confederating. The Masonic Society is an organization as a center of union for Freemasons who desire to study and promote the mystic arts. The mystic arts is, is witchcraft also dealing in slaves and souls of men, also deception through sorcery, and sorcery is pharmakia. We know that word pharmakia is drugs. It's history, it's philosophy, it's rituals, it's rites, it's customs, it's practices while promoting the common good. The Pope, he promotes the common good. And the common good is Sunday worship. And general welfare of his community by espousing and promulgating, that means making public, spreading, broadcasting, circulating, promoting, and enforcing and passing those tenets of Freemasonry that bring about civil, civic betterment and social improvement for the greater community at large. And remember the common good, blacks were not uh, uh, included in the common good. And so this is white supremacy. To support the, and conduct research, education, and informational activities to increase awareness of, of the need of brotherly love. 
But their brother, they didn't look at the black man as their brother. They looked at him as a wild ass. Truth, relief, and charity towards all mankind, except for the black. Great Country says that his work was concealed. His power was so, it says his work was so disguised that the degradation and misery which resulted were not seen to be the fruits of transgression. They didn't look at blacks as mankind. They didn't see the fruits of transgression. Daniel 8.13, Daniel 8.13 tells us this. The fruits of transgression. It was not seen that way, but they need to look at it that way. Daniel 8, chapter 13, tells us this. Remember, we're dealing with the times of the, of the Gentiles being fulfilled. The time of the Gentiles being fulfilled. Daniel 8, 13, tells us this. And I heard one saint speak to another saint and said to that certain saint, How long shall be the vision of the daily, that's paganism, and the transgression of desolation, that's the abomination of desolation, to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden down underfoot. So it's going to be trodden down by the Gentiles. How long is it going to be? And he said unto me, Into 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now, verse 23 tells us this. It talks about the latter end. Verse 19. I'm going to jump to verse 19. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. And then he goes, talks about the ram, Medo-Persia, Greece, Alexander the Great, all that. Then he talks about Rome, verse 22 says. I mean, verse 23 says, And in the latter time of the indignation of their kingdom, when transgressors are come to full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark senses shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, his dragon power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. It says, and through his policy, his policy is what goes on in the secret chambers. Also, he shall cause craft, that's witchcraft. So that's promoting, that's what the Masonic society promotes, the mystic arts. Cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. Destroy many. I'm going to read Great Controversy again. I'm going to go back and read it. It says, His work was so disguised, the degradation and misery which resulted were not seen to be the fruits of transgression. That's destroying marvelously, wonderfully, miraculously. He says, He shall destroy many. And he shall also stand up against the prince of princes, that's Jesus Christ. But he shall be broken without hand. So this power is going to rise. So Jesus Christ comes again the second time and smite that statue and the feet that's made out of iron and clay. Rome, a civil power and a religious power. And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore shut thou the vision, for it shall be for many days the many days that's the time period we're looking at from 1865 to jesus christ comes back again so satan is going to be working through secret societies to bring about a one world religion a one world order confederating satan's forces together through secret societies and freemasonry back to great controversy and his power was so far counter acted by the working of the Spirit of God that his purposes were prevented from reaching their full fruitation. God had to cut it short. The people did not trace the effects to its cause and discover the source of their misery. And that's what goes on with, the, with a lot of the youth right now, the black youth. They don't trace the cause to the effect. They don't see. They don't see Satan working in the background. They don't see the papacy working in the background. They don't see the secret societies working for the destruction of a race. They don't understand the common good. They don't understand what's going on. And they don't understand why we are, are have been treated so bad for all these years and our ancestors. But in revolution, the law of God was openly set aside by national councils. That's secret 
councils, secret chambers. And in the reign of terror which followed, the working cause and effect could be seen by all. And that's the beast that's sent out of the bottom of the pit. It's working today. The mystery of iniquity that now works. It says, when France publicly prohibited the Bible, wicked men and the spirit of darkness exulted in their attainments of the object so long desired. Making everyone atheists homosexuals, murderers, a kingdom free from the restraints of the law of God. God let it loose. Because the sentence against an evil work was not speedily executed, therefore the hearts of the Son of Man are fully set in them to do evil. That's the fruit. See? That's the fruit. That's the full wind. The hearts of men are fully set in them to do evil. It says it's going to be three phases. First the blade, then the ear, then the full ear in the corn. That's the fruit. It's going to be fully set. The heart of men is going to be fully set to do evil when Christ comes the second time. Before he comes, the common good. The Bible says in measure, when it shoot a fourth. That means it's going to bring, it says... Matthew chapter 13, this is Isaiah 27, says, In measure, when it shoot forth, first the blade, then the ear, then the full ear and the corn, thou wilt debate with it, or you will toss it. You will, you will have an uh, uh, angry shouting match or controversy with it. When he stay off his rough wind, in the day of the east wind, great controversy, page 5, 64 says liberty of conscience threatened the papal church will never relinquish her claims of infallibility all that she has done in her persecution of those who reject her dogmas she holds to be right everything she did was right and would she not repeat the same act should the opportunities be presented let the restraints that's the staying staying of the rough wind now imposed by secular government be removed and Rome being reinstated in her to in her former power there would speedily be a revival of her tyranny and persecution there are many who are disposed to attribute any fear of the of the perils of the Roman Catholic Catholicism in the United States to bigotry or childishness such see nothing in character that's the name of the beast or the fruit of the beast. An attitude, that's the spirit or the heart of the beast, of Romanism that is hostile to our free institutions to find nothing portentous. It says, it is growth. Let us, in, in its growth, this is restoring. It says, let us then first compare some of the fundamental principles of our government with those of the Catholic Church. The angry horse, not the wild-ass common good. The origins of the common good. It is important not to romanticize the past. I've noted, this is taken out of the book, Common Good, page 37. It is important not to romanticize. We're going to look at the found fundamentals. It says, it's important not to romanticize the past. I've noted, at America's founding, the common good did not include African Americans or Native Americans, women's, and and the non-proprieties, not uh, and the non primary means that's not owning land or securities as a principal source of revenue. You're not upper class. You were not allowed to buy property because you didn't have one thing. You didn't have the money. You didn't have the backing. It says, women and non proprieties could not vote. The founding fathers, they were Masons, nonetheless embraced a set of principles, and that's the Freemason Constitution, the bylaws. That would eventually lead to far more inclusive society. That means white supremacy. They understood that the best way to preserve freedom was through people fiercely committed. When they spoke of virtue, it was not as we understand the term, or like we read earlier, the Bible, involving personal kindness and gener generosity. For them, virtue meant a concern for common good. Without a virtuous citizenry, that means white citizenry only, 
white household only. They feared the young republic would succumb to authoritarian rule. That's dragon rule. Okay. It says, the central power, the central power, the strong central power we're looking at is Genesis chapter 10, 3. It's talking about the son of the sons of Gomer. The sons of Gomer. Gomer means the organic accumulation or organized aggression. That's hostility. It also means it's going to end and it's going to come to a finish. It's going to rule until the end until we are worshiping Satan. This book is written by Robert B. Reich. Robert B. Reich. Sounds German. Why? Why? The liberty of conscience, the aims of Babylon, the Constitution of the United States guarantees liberty of conscience. Nothing is dearer or more fundamental. Pope Pius the Ninth. Pope Pius the Ninth. This is the beast. In his encyclical letter of August 15th, 1854. This great controversy, page 564. August 15th, 1854 said, The absurd, absurd. And erroneous doctrine of ravings in defense of liberty of conscience are a most pestilential effort, a pest of all others, most to be dreaded in a state. The same Pope in his encyclical letter of December 8th, 1864, one year before slavery, slavery ended, amethystized, that means he cursed or condemned, those who assert the liberty of conscience and religious worship, also all such as maintain that the church may not use force. Who's the wild ass? Beating the horse, using force. Catholic Church and slavery, this is taken out of Catholic Church and slavery. The same Pope, Pope Pius the, the uh, Ninth, the same Pope in 1866, one year after slavery ended, or supposed to have ended, the holy or the unholy demonic, office of the Pope Pius IX affirmed that subject to conditions, the condition is slavery. It was not against divine law for slaves to be sold, bought, or exchanged. You see who's going to give their power and strength unto the beast? The one who has been supporting the South in there and training the South in all these tortures while the deadly wound was supposed to be, was supposed to be uh, uh, given to the beast, the power was still working through the Jesuits, the secret organizations and the Freemasons and the Illuminati to bring about the pure Luciferian doctrine which is worshiping of Satan, Sunday law. Revelation 13, 11 through 18, the angry horse and the wild ass. Revelation 17, uh, uh, 7 to 13. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore did thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, that which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Revelation 11, 17, the same words quoted from the French Revolution and go into perdition. Just like Judas, the son of perdition. Just like Paul tells us in 2 Thessalonians 2, talking about the man of sin, which is the Pope. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder. The Bible says all the world wondered at the beast. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. It's still working. It was still working at that time period, 1866. You see that? But it's not the same persecuting power it was in 1206, in the, in the, uh, from 1798 to, to, I mean, from 538 to 1798, 12 and 60 years. But it was still working. It was not, but it was still working in secret, in silent. It says, And here is the mind that hath wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. The woman is the church, the Vatican. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet coming. When he cometh, he must continue a short space. A short space also means a little season that we just read about in Revelation chapter 6. They must continue a short space, a short season. 
a little season. It says, And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and go off in perdition. Eight is the number of perdition. Go off into perdition. And the ten horns which thou saw are ten kings, and the ten kings are the common good, which received no power, which received power as kings one hour with the beast. So they're going to receive power as kings one hour, one hour with the beast. It says, These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. They're training our young people in these institutions, the young people in the institutions, about the common good. And the common good is to bring all, everybody, make them all have the same mind, the one mind. It says, And God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill His will, Revelation 17, 17. God is going to put it in His heart to fulfill His will and to agree. It says, And to give their kingdom unto the beasts until the words of God be fulfilled. It says, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For He is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with them are called, chosen, and faithful. The origin of the common good, we read about that early. They, the founding fathers, did not create the most efficient system of government, or one that would generate the most wealth. The Rockefellers. They wanted a system that would produce the most virtuous people. Is there no virtue among us? Acts James Madison, rhetorically. If there be not, no form of government can render, can be rendered secure. The suppo it says to suppose that any form of government will secure liberty or happiness without any virtue in the people is uh, a criminal idea. Now, he was holding slaves. In Federalist uh, Number 71, Madison, also a Freemason, that promotes the common good, wrote that, It is just observation that people commonly intend, intend the public good. And in Federalist Number 45, he claimed that the public good, the real welfare of the great body of people, and this is, remember black saying inclusion is, is the supreme object to be pursued and that no form of government whatever has any other value than as it may be filled for the attainment of this object. Both Madison and Thomas Jefferson were influenced by 18th century French Enlightenment, the beast that is sent out of the bottom of the plate. That's the education. I mean, that's, you can look at your book, Education, page 228. Philosopher Montes, I can't even say his name, who denied a republic as a self-regulating political society whose mainstream was civic virtue. Edmund Burke likewise noted that connection between the virtuous citizenry, that's the, that's the virtuous citizenry, that's white supremacy, that's common good. And prevention of tyranny in 1770. Burke warned that when bad men combine, when bad men combine, the good must associate. So he's saying when all these bad men, when they unite, the good must associate. Else they will fall one by one. It says on unpitied sacrifice in a contemptual struggle. Almost two centuries later, Martin Luther King Jr. applied the same logic to the struggle for civil rights in America. The ultimate tragedy is not oppression and cruelty by the bad people, but the silence over that by good people. So when you silent, you, 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 you're doing the same thing. You're murdering. He was murdered in 18, 1968. Luke 21, 24 says, And they shall fall by the edge of sword and led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So we got the times of Gentiles when our nation set up this constitution. And that's that pale horse of Revelation chapter 6. The common good, the mystery of iniquity. Luke 21, 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon. May 19, 1780. And the stars, and it says, and the stars, stars, 
1833. And upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity and the seas waving and roaring, men's hearts felling them for fear. It says, and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. This is taken out of books, slavery and war. I mean, it's taken out of Testimonies for the Church, page 186, Slavery and War, page 186. It says, My attention was called from the scene. There seemed to be a little time of peace. Once more the inhabitants of the earth were presented before me. And again, everything was in utmost confusion. Strife, war, bloodshed, with famine, pestilence, raged everywhere. Other nations were engaged in this war and confusion. The war caused famine, want and bloodshed caused pestilence, men's hearts felling them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. So she used this quote. This quote is dealing with the times of the Gentiles. This is coming down to our time period and the times we're talking about. On page 64, at page 264, this is the beginning of the statement. So she's talking about wars that, that's going to be seen. She wrote this in the, in the uh, 1800s. It says, before the war, she wrote this in 1861. On page 264, at the conference at Roosevelt, New York, August 3rd, 1861, when the brethren and sister were assembled on the day set apart for humiliation, fasting, and prayer, the Spirit of the Lord rested upon me rested upon us and I was taken off in vision and showed the sin of slavery which has so long been a curse to this nation the fugitive slave law was calculated to crush out of man every noble generous feeling of sympathy that should arise in the hearts for the oppressed and suffering slave it says it says uh, 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 uh. And then, okay, so then I, I read something It was dealing with this lady. This lady, her name is called To Wipe Out All Sympathy for the Suffering Slave. This is a quote from a white supremacist. And this is what she said. She was talking about white supremacy, how it was institutionally embedded in the U.S. as a matter of foundational law. This is Dr. J. Battlelords. So what she was doing, she was justifying white supremacy. She also encouraged her audience to hold on to that image. That's the image of the beast. She says that it is a tool to tell us, talking about the whites, where we need to go and where we can go. She said it offers hope. That's a quote from Dr. J. Battlelords, promoting white supremacy. They are trying to curse God's people, just like Balaam. You see, cursing God's people, while these are the doctors who's training the, the, the new leaders of the earth. It says, God said he had put it in their hearts to fulfill his will. It says, it was in direct opposition to the teachings of Christ. That's what the Pope, when the Pope said, the Pope, the Pope was promoting that. Remember that Pope Pius VI in 1866? He said, it, it ain't nothing wrong with holding slaves. And then, as she says, it was in direct, the fugitive slave law was in direct opposition to the teachings of Christ. It says, God's scourge is now upon the north because they have so long submitted to the advances of the slave owner. I mean, the slave power. If you're a mystery of iniquity, I'm going to try to finish off with this slide. The Bible says, remember ye not, 2 Thessalonians 2, 5 through 11. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. The same thing Jesus tells us in Matthew 24, 24 to 25. It says, Now you know what withholdeth, and that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth, the word letteth, it means stays or holds back. Stay off the rough wind. Only he who now let if the word is katecho. It means to hold down, hold fast, keep in memory, make toward, possess, retain, seize, seize on, stay. Take and withhold. It says, clean or cleave or burst, burst through and let shoot out or slip away. Only he who now let if will let. 
stay, hold back, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. It's Satan. And it's all those secret sides who's combining with him. He says, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And we know that power, that's dealing with Revelation chapter 13. Verse 13, the beast, the false prophet that's ascending out of that, the false prophet with the two horns like a lamb, that, that was lynching over 200 and, so I can't even, 2,000 people in this time period. It says, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them a strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned to believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Revelation 17, 13 to 7 says, God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Second, 1 Samuel 6, 14 says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. God is going to put it in their hearts because their neglect of preaching this truth and knowing the times that they were living in. Great controversy. I'm going to stop right here. And I hope that this presentation and my prayers that this presentation has opened up our eyes so we can see that where we stand in earth's history that Jesus Christ is soon to come and we need to get prepared we need to get away put away all these besetting sins and we need to acknowledge certain things about our character we was in churches I was in the church in the church they were openly racist present truth church openly racist but no one wants to address the issue no one wants to address the issue and so the same thing that was going on then, and I believe that they have that they are part of a secret societies. I believe that they signed that 501c3. I believe that a lot of them are Masons. Yeah, it may not be true, but it may be. But that's what I believe, and that's the feeling that I got in, tr in visiting some of these churches. That they felt they were superior over the ones who are supposed to be their brothers, and vice versa. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. See that? The wild ass needs to speak. Stop here.